All right, folks, welcome back. I'm Jake Ellenbogen. We're going to be talking about the Rams 2024 season predictions. Before we get into that, I just want to let you guys know at any point, if you want to follow me on this app on Bleacher Report at JK Bogan or any other social media app, it's also going to be at JK Bogan. I want to give a special uh, thanks to Bleacher Report for having me. And let's dive into it because we got the schedule pulled up here. And they're kicking things off right away with the Detroit Lions. The Rams are playing the Lions in a rematch. The last time we saw the Rams in uniform, uh, of course, with starters included, was at Ford Field against the Lions. Well, they're picking up where they left off, and uh, they're hoping for revenge in that game. I think the Rams are going to win this game. I think they're the better football team. I think that they were really, really close uh, last year. I understand a lot of people are concerned about no Aaron Donald. A lot of people are concerned about the way Ernest Jones, but I think this offense is a lot better than last year. And I think the defense is going to be an opportunistic one at that. So uh, I look at this team. I think they're going to do a much better job at attacking Jared Goff. They're going to do a much better job at limiting the yards that, you know, a Gibbs or Montgomery uh, can get on them. And I think ultimately the Rams are going to take care of business and start the season at 1-0. and And of course, that means looking at the Arizona Cardinals here, uh, I have the Rams also beating the Arizona Cardinals. I think the Rams are clearly the better team than the Cardinals. They've had a lot of success, especially in Arizona. Obviously, Kyron Williams has just run roughshod of that team uh, the last two outings. And I don't expect anything to be different. Now, keep in mind, the first game of the year against the Lions, no Garoppolo as backup quarterback, um, no Alec Jackson, who's also suspended for the first two games. Uh, Rob Havenstein is probably not going to suit up at right tackle. So you will see some sort of, you know, kind of, um, you know, there's going to be some shuffling, right? And now going into the Cardinals game, you will probably have Havenstein back if he doesn't play in week one. You still won't have Garoppolo as your backup. That's not until the 49er game. And you still won't have Alec Jackson at left tackle. But with that said, I think that's plenty. And I think the Rams get the win against the Cardinals here, moving them to 2-0. and I think the Rams are going to season 3-0. and I think they're going to beat the 49ers. We've seen in the past, the 49ers have just absolutely laced to the Rams. But I've been very encouraged the last two outings. And of course, you know, the last outing was against backups. But that first outing, week two, no Cooper Cup. It was Kyron Williams' first game as the bona fide starter for the Rams and Puka Nakua's second game in the NFL. I think the Rams became a much better team over time. Obviously, week two was exciting. They played their hearts out and they probably should have won that game against the Niners. But the reality is they're a much better team now. I think they've learned a lot of lessons uh, in between then and now. And so I think the Rams at home, at their home opener, SoFi Stadium, I think they get this thing done. And I think they beat the 49ers to take a 3 nothing win-loss record to start the season. I also think they're going to go to Soldier Field and they're, they're going to take care of business there. Make no mistake about it, the Bears have surrounded Caleb Williams with probably more weapons than any rookie has had in quite some time. But the reality is, I think the Rams are still the better team. And the Bears have not really proven anything. So we'll see what ends up happening. I think the Bears can score for sure. But I trust the Rams in this one. And I have them going to 4-0 and to start the season. And that means week five, I got to give them their first loss of the year. The Rams have been incapable of beating the Packers. They just have not been able to do it. Whether it's unlucky or what have you, I don't know. They have not been able to beat the Packers. Does Matt LaFleur have Sean McVay's number? Uh, perhaps. But I think in this one, it's going to be a close game. I think this is going to come down to the wire. And ultimately, I do think that Jordan Love and the Packers are going to do just enough at the end of this game to give the Rams their first loss of the season, which does mean the Rams go into the bye week at 4-1, and one, which I think anyone, any Rams fan would take that. Um, I have the Rams winning four of the five games. Of course, even the 49er game. I think some people would swap this out for the 49er game uh, in their, their thought process. Um, but I do think that the Rams are going to lose at least one of those five games. I don't have them losing more than one. 
So they go in the bye at four and one. They come out of the bye with reckless abandon. I think at this point in the season, you're in the week six, um, or excuse me, week seven. You're at the week seven mark. This is when your rookies, this is when a Jared Verse, this is when a Braden Fisk and a Cameron Kinchins, this is when these guys will start to really erupt, I think, as you know, towards the middle of the year. And at that point, I think the Raiders, whether it's Gardner Minshew or Aiden O'Connell, I don't think it's really going to matter. I think the Rams are the better team. This is at, of course, SoFi Stadium. So I'll take the Rams in this one, put them at six and one, or excuse me, five and one going into week eight which, of course, I have them going 6-1, and one, beating the Vikings. The Vikings still have talent. The defense has a lot of talent. They went out and got guys like uh, Van Ginkle and Blake Cashman, and they signed Stefan Gilmore. But the reality is I don't trust their offense, okay? I think they have a lot of weapons, that's for sure, but I don't trust Sam Darnold. I think the Rams are going to get after Darnold in this one, and I think the Rams are going to come away with a win um, against a familiar opponent, one that they know very well. They know. Kevin Donald very well. And I think they get the win and the Rams improve to six and one on the season. The Rams dropped their second game of the year, though, against the Seattle Seahawks on November 3rd. I have to give Seattle credit. They went out and they really did away with what was, in my opinion, holding them back the most. I really do like what they did going out and getting McDonald. I like some of the moves they made. They have a good team on paper. I think they are a tad overrated in the receiver room. But with that said, I do think Seattle steals one of those games against the Rams. We had the Rams taking down the 49ers earlier. Now we have the Seahawks taking down the Rams. That puts the Rams at 6-2 and two going into Week 10 in a primetime game, Monday Night Football to be exact, against the Miami Dolphins. And so in that one, the Jalen Ramsey Bowl uh, in Hunter Lawn Bowl, if you want to go that far. I have the Rams winning that game to improve to 7-2. and two. I think the Rams can get after Tannehill. I think at this point in the season, I don't expect the Rams to at any point be a lockdown, shutdown defense, but I think they're going to be an opportunistic one. I think they're going to be able to force turnovers uh, when needed, and I think that's really going to really help boost what is going to be one of the top three offenses in football, in my opinion. So I think the Rams take down the Dolphins there to improve to seven and two. I think they absolutely, they go into Foxborough and they destroy New England. I just don't think that that's a good fit at all for New England. Uh, maybe that late in the season, you might even see Drake May. Um, and I don't think New England is a, the worst team. I just think the Rams match up really well. So I think this will be a blowout. Eight and two Rams. I have them taking down the Eagles finally. It seems like they haven't beaten the Eagles in a while. Had them taking down the Eagles to improve to nine and two. That's going to be at SoFi. And that is also on a Sunday night uh, slot. So another primetime game. I think the Rams take care of business against the Eagles and improve to nine and two. I think they beat the Saints again. This is in New Orleans. I don't really trust New Orleans. I don't really know what their plan is. There's a lot of fans that are kind of out on Derek Carr. So I don't really know what to make of them. But I will say I trust the Rams to take down the Saints. And I trust the Rams to get to 10 wins uh, by week 13. So now they're a 10-2 and two ball club. But what's going to happen? Well, I do expect them to have their first skid of this season. I think they're going to lose straight here. They're going to lose to the Bills, and I think they lose to the 49ers. I have the Rams splitting that 49ers series. Uh, I think that, you know, to start the season, they're more likely to win that game. I think in San Francisco, that could be a problem. Thursday night, short week after playing a, in my opinion, I would say a very physical Bills team um, that has given them fits in the past. So I, I have them losing both of those games. That would put the Rams down a 10 and four going into MetLife Stadium week 16 against the New York Jets. I do have them winning that game. The Rams love going to MetLife. They've had a lot of success there. I don't expect that to stop. I think they'll get after Aaron Rodgers. They'll force him to make a mistake or two. It'll be a fun game, but I think the Rams prevail in that one. And then the Rams, they win against the Cardinals. Cardinals, pretty much the only success they've ever had was at SoFi Stadium. But if I'm the Cardinals, I don't want to play the Rams this late in the season. I think at this point, everyone's locked and loaded. They're ready for a long playoff run. I think the defense is as opportunistic as it gets by this point. I think we've probably seen to you know, put it, you know, it's week 17. 
So we've probably seen some really good things out of Blake Corum. We've probably seen some really good things out of Jordan Whittington. Um, we've probably seen some X factors really emerge. A Tutu Atwell, a Demarcus Robinson. The offensive line is really gelled to this point. So I think the Rams would win that game. They move to 12 and four. And then the last but not least, the final game, the finale in Seattle. Just kidding. It's actually in LA. Thank God. The Rams split the series on the season against the Seahawks, and they win that game to go to 13 and four, finish out the season as the number one team in not only the NFC West, but for the first time in Sean McVay's career, secure the number one seed in the NFC. Now, last year, when I was predicting the Rams, I came on here and I said exactly what I said. I did say the Rams would go 10 and 7, which they did. And unfortunately, I did say that they would lose to the Lions in the playoffs, which they did. So this time around, I think that the Rams aren't going to lose. I think the Rams, truthfully, and I don't think they're talked about nearly enough for a team that has already gone to two Super Bowls between a GM and a head coach combination, a team that has the best quarterback in the NFC a team that has one of the best running backs, plenty of star power, whether that's Cup, Puka Nakua, uh, Kobe Turner, Cam Curl, a team that has really learned from their previous mistakes and has addressed them in free agency, in the draft, a team that's gone through a little bit of a rebirth and a reboot, if you will, going out, changing their archetype, changing the type of you know, at least the, the type of player that they look at. I think the Rams are going to win. They're going to first off have a first round bye because I have them getting the number one seed. They're going to have the first round bye. Then they're going to win the divisional round. They're going to win the conference championship and they're going to go to the Super Bowl and they're going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs to stop Kansas City from getting a three-peat and to kick back and just remind everyone that the Rams didn't go anywhere. Last year, they easily could have won the Super Bowl. They were the hottest team down the stretch. If not for a bad call and obviously a bad start to the game against the Lions, they probably move on and they would have done some damage. I think they could have pushed the 49ers around. I think they could have pushed you know, the Kansas City Chiefs. I understand it sounds kind of crazy, but it shouldn't be considered crazy. This team didn't go anywhere. The Rams had one bad year in 2022 where literally everyone got hurt except for three guys. And since then, people have forgotten that they are one of the elite teams since 2017. There are not many teams that are as good as the Rams since 2017 when Sean McVay took over. And I do think that matters. And I do think it should be factored in moving forward. So to wrap it up, I think that the Rams, in it, when it's all said and done, are going to be Super Bowl champions yet again, okay? I don't say this very often. I said that they would lose last year in the playoffs to the Lions. I hated admitting that, but I felt it. I, I literally, I felt it all along. That was what was going to happen. 2022, I'm not going to sit here and say they should have won the Super Bowl. Obviously, they went 5-12, and 12, but that game and the injuries they sustained really kind of changed everything. Um, and then 2021, I said, as soon as they traded for Matthew Stafford, they would win the Super Bowl because I really felt like all these years, Jared Goff was good. Jared Goff could do the surface level things and maybe then some. We saw those moments against the Vikings on Thursday Night Football. We saw those moments against the Chiefs. But more often than not, what you got out of Jared Goff was a average to barely above average quarterback that could not win the big game. And I did not ever really think after Jared Goff lost that game, the Rams lost that game to the Patriots in Super Bowl 53. I never once thought they're going to turn this around. They're going to win with Goff. I really felt like that was it because you either have it or you don't. And Goff was not ready for that moment. I don't know if he ever will be. Now he might, who knows, but we'll see. I think when it came to Stafford though, it was the perfect storm. The Rams were ready to win it. Stafford was ready to win it. Stafford was ready to get going. And he had a fantastic season, one of the best seasons of his career. 
I think he's going to have another really good season, but I don't necessarily expect him to throw for 40 plus touchdowns because I think this is going to be a balanced offense. I think that is what's going to make them run is that you have a Kyron Williams and a Blake Corum to fall off on. You have a really, really good offensive line and you have weapons galore. Matthew Stafford can throw all over the yard. We already know that, but they also can run the ball. And if the defense is as opportunistic as I believe they're going to be, I think they're going to have way more possessions than they did last year. So I'm excited for that. Um, like I said, I, I wouldn't put this out there if I didn't truly believe it. And I definitely think it's a fair schedule because if we're being honest here, looking through this schedule, going 13 and four, that might freak people out. 13 and four, you think we're going to be that good? Here's the reality. Okay. The Lions, we know they're a playoff team. The Cardinals, we know they're not very good. I mean, we'll see what ends up happening, but yeah. The 49ers, the Rams have closed the gap on. The Bears, they were not a playoff team last year. Improved, but the Rams should be favored in that game. The Packers, that should be probably one of the tougher games. The Raiders should be an easier game. The Vikings should be an easier game without Kirk Cousins. Seattle, yeah, they'll give them their fits, but I think if you split the season series against Seattle and the 49ers and you sweep the Cardinals, well... Right then and there, you have four wins. The Patriots should be an easier game. The Dolphins aren't going to be as tough as maybe it's billed out to be. The Eagles should be a little bit tough. The Saints should not be tough. You could make the argument on this schedule, and obviously we don't know exactly how the season's going to go. But as far as below 500 teams, the Rams play, in my opinion, you could argue that they're playing one in the Cardinals, potentially the Bears, eight and nine. We'll see. Uh, potentially the Bears. You talk about the Raiders, that'd be three. The Vikings potentially would be four. Maybe Seattle would be five, but we're going to say four. Uh, the Patriots, five. The Saints, six. The Cardinals, again, seven. So seven out of the 17 games that you play will potentially be against below 500 teams. And as far as the elite teams that the Rams are playing, you have the 49ers twice. And that's fair. You have the Packers and you have potentially the Eagles, but I'd probably hold off on that. So you'd have the 49ers twice, the Packers and the Bills, we'll say. So that's four elite teams, 17 games. I don't think the Rams have it that bad. I know people freak out about their schedule. I don't think their schedule is that tough. There's not one team there that I'm like, there's no chance the Rams beat them. Like, even though I have the Rams losing to the Packers week five, and I have them losing to the Seahawks, and I have them losing to the Bills, and I have them losing to the 49ers, doesn't mean they can't win all of those games. Just like it doesn't mean the games I have them winning, they can't lose. This is the NFL after all. But I think the Rams have done a really nice job at addressing all of their needs. And I think when it comes to Ernest Jones, they know more than we do. So I'll leave it at that. Not going to speak too much on that because we haven't really had a chance to see Christian Roseboom be the guy or Troy Breeder, but we will see. And we'll see if Omar Spates or Jake Hummel gets an opportunity there. But that's really it, guys. I, I think the Rams, they're in for a fun year. Buckle up. Should be, should be a real good time. But that's going to do it. I appreciate Bleacher Report as always for having me. Be sure to, uh, you know, like um wherever you see this you know on uh you know bleach report the app or whatever um be sure to drop a comment and also if you uh like what you heard be sure to follow me on all social media including the bleach report app at jk bogan i will see you guys throughout the season and you guys take care later folks